Good morning, good morning, Ministries of Hope Christian Church. Thank you for joining us this morning. Hopefully you had a great time in Sunday school as I did, diving into Exodus and getting into Moses and getting to know his walk with God a little bit better and getting to know God better uh, through him delivering these the Israelites. Amen. Amen. We're going to go ahead and go into prayer. Father God, I just thank you for being here with me this morning. Father God, I thank you, Father God. Speak through me in me. Decrease me. Increase all of you, Father God. Renew within me a right spirit, clean heart, Father God. I thank you right now that your word goes forth unadulterated, Lord, that you have your way in me, Father God. Use me all, Father God, past, present, and future in this moment to give glory unto your name and glory unto your word and glory unto you, Father God. I thank you right now that this word goes forth with on understanding hearts and receptive ears. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and get into his word this morning. Amen. Um, we'll be coming from James chapter 3. And that's in the New Testament. And while you grab that with your Bibles this morning, um, I want to give a quick shout out to Pastor. Um, we're under the pastoral leadership of Reverend Flory Williams. She's a true woman of faith, a true woman of God. Um, and she is really, 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 really a woman of prayer. And she stands on his word. So um, hopefully once the coronavirus is over, you'll be, be able to come and join in with us at Ministries of Hope Christian Church in Stafford, Virginia, and really be able to get a feel for her spirit because I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Um, she is a true, true titan in this word. Amen. Um, I also want to give honor to my husband and my children. Um, we've been quarantined together, having a good time in the Lord. Amen. And I also want to give honor to all the other leaders of Ministries of Hope Christian Church church as well as the con congregation and you as well for joining us our Facebook family and YouTube family as well so we're going to go ahead and get into this word this morning hopefully you grabbed it we're going to start at chapter 3 and we're going to read from verse 1 to 12 amen and it reads my brethren be not many masters knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation for in many things we offend all if any man offend not in word the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body behold we put bits in the horse's mouths and they may obey us and we turn about their whole body behold also the ships which though they be so great are driven by the fierce winds yet they turn about with a very small hem whithsoever the governor listeth verse 5 even so the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth and the tongue is a fire a world of iniquity so is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and setteth on on fire the course of nature and it is set on fire of hell verse 7 for every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and have been tamed of mankind verse 8 but the tongue can na can no man tame it is an unruly evil full of deadly poison therewith bless we god even the father and therewith curse we men which are made after the similitude of god out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing my brethren these things ought not to be so verse 11 don't they fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine fig? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless his word. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and get into this word this morning. We talked about when we talked about the centurion a couple weeks ago and his faith and how Jesus marveled at his faith because he wanted his servant to be healed. And he told Jesus, just send the word. You ain't even got to come to my house, send the word. And I know he'll be healed. And he was healed because he believed, right? And so... God, uh, Jesus marveled at his faith, right? And then we talked about in there, God told us how we're standing, how we stand on his word. We got to believe. So now in standing, how do you stand on this word? This morning, he wanted to teach us how to stand on his word. Amen. And we're going to stand by girding thy mouth. Amen. Controlling thy mouth. So we're going to go ahead and get into this word. Amen. The Bible tells us the heart and the tongue are connected. That's the first thing we got to talk about. The heart and the tongue are connected. They intertwine. They work together. They operate as one unit. Now, we're not talking about the heart, the physical heart that beats. We're not talking about that heart, the natural heart. We're not talking about that. We're talking about spirit, your spirit, your soul, your mind, your body. That's your heart, your heart. We worship God in spirit and in truth, right? Your spirit, that's your heart, right? So now... When it talks about the heart, when you understand how they work together, um, there's plenty of scriptures in the Bible that confirm this. You can study them on your own time, but I'm going to pull two for you, which is Luke and Matthew. Now, Luke tells us that if you're good, 
he, you're going to produce good. If you're evil, your heart is evil, basically, you're going to produce evil. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, right? So that's what Luke tells us. Then further on, Matthew tells us that that is not actually what goes into a man that defiles him is what proceeds out of his mouth because from his mouth comes from the heart. What comes out of his mouth comes from the heart. So what's in your heart is coming out your mouth. That's what defiles you. It's not what goes in, right? So what comes out? So your heart is connected to that tongue. From your heart, the mouth speaks. And we know that further because of Job. Now, Job was tested, and I love Job. You know, those were two, two main things I studied growing up was Job and Proverbs. Proverbs was my fave. Job's my fave. I love every book of the Bible, but those two lean on me a little different. So um, I'm going to go ahead, you know, now God bringing me there to um, talk about Job. So the first thing as far as Job, we learn about how he spoke and you can sin in your speech. You really can sin in your speech. And that's why guarding your, your heart and your mouth is important. The Bible tells us to guard our house, our, our heart because the wells of life flow from it. So, and now we see what goes for on in your heart is coming out through your mouth. You can always tell what's going on with somebody because it's going to come out through their mouth. You can't hide it. It's coming out because what's in there is coming out. That's what the Bible says, right? So the thing about Job is, uh, Satan wanted to test Job, right? And he went to God and God was like, fine, you can test him. He said, yeah, you, you got this hedge of protection around him. He's rich, all this stuff. He got plenty of kids, wealth, you know, he got lineage going on, all this other stuff. But if I take all that away, I bet you he curse you. I bet you he curse your name. I bet you he does that. Right. And God was like, go ahead, try, try Job, try Job. So he tells him right there to try him and see he, uh, that same day come down, Satan gets to work. He goes out uh, destroys all his, his, the children were over the older brother's house and having a party, drinking wine or whatever. The whole tent comes down, destroy them all. All his kids gone in one day. Then all his, his, his servants come to him telling him about his riches, his cattle, his camel, everything gone in one day, wiped out. He had went from here to here that quick. And Loving Job, Job responds in, uh, in verse chapter one, verse 20 through 22, I'm gonna read. You don't have to turn there, put in your notes to study later, but it says, then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshiped. So he didn't complain, he worshiped God and said, naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return. Thither the Lord gave, the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. So he watched his mouth, right? From his heart, he was speaking from his heart. He worshiped God. Even though all this happened, he worshiped God. He was speaking from his heart, Lord. He didn't, he didn't do what Satan thought he was going to do. Satan gave it, gave it to him and he thought, he thought he was going to curse God and he didn't. He bent down and worshiped God. And he said, Naked I came in this world, naked I'm going out. So it don't even matter. All this stuff, I came in this world without it. It don't matter because I'm going out of this world without it. So worship God is glorified, right? He didn't sin in his speech. And then the second time it talks about him in his speech was when he was talking to his wife. His wife uh, was like, how are you keeping your integrity? All this stuff has happened. You got these boils going on, Satan and put these boils on you. All this stuff is happening. How are you keeping your integrity? Why don't you just curse God and die? And he looked at her and was like, uh, you sound foolish. How dare you think that I'm about to sit here and get every blessing from God and not think that evil won't visit upon me? basically is what he tells her. How are you going to get the good and, and not have the bad either, right? So he says that to her. And then the Bible says right here, um, let me see, 10, verse 10 of chapter two, it says right here. So he says, but he said unto her, thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What shall we receive? Good at the hand of God and shall not receive evil. And all this did not Job sin with his lips. So you can sin with your lips. Amen. Amen. And why is that important to us? Knowing that you can sin with your lips, right? First thing we want to do when, when we're standing on God and we're going through trials and we're standing on God and how you're leaning, you want to check your heart. Like we said, the heart controls that tongue. So you want to check your heart. You want to do a checkup of your heart. Why? Because Proverb 18 tells us, it says, death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it 
shall eat the fruit thereof. So you basically, what that means is you have what you say. What comes out, what's in your heart and what comes out your mouth. You want to check your heart and check your mouth because you have what you say. Amen. Amen. So what's coming out? What's coming out? What are you speaking to? You have what you say. And then the second thing it also tells us right there in James chapter one, and I'm going to read it because in James chapter one, it tells you now we know you have what you say, right? And then it talks about you in verse chapter uh, James chapter one, verse 26, 27. It says, if any man among you seem to be religious and brighteth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled is undefiled before God and the father is this, to visit the fatherless, the widows in affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. So therefore, if you claim to be religious, you claim or seem to be religious, those who seem to be religious, but you can't control your tongue, the Bible says it right here. You deceive your own heart. So that's why it's important to check your heart. And how are you checking your heart with the word of God? Seeing if what's coming out your mouth lines up with the word of God. Amen. Amen. That's how you check in your heart. Why? Because now we know you can sin with your mouth, right? That's why you want to stand guard because the Bible tells us, Ooh, thank you, Lord. Stand guard over your heart because the wells of life flow from it. So everything that's in you is coming out. So you got to make sure what you putting in you is right. That's where them scriptures come in. You got to put it in you so that when trials and tribulations come, as Matthew talks about when trials and tribulations come, you can reverberate that word back, right? And then the second thing, the third thing God tells me is that it's not enough just to believe. It's not enough just to believe. There's got to be works behind it. And we know that because this part is... <clears throat> This part of how you're standing, it's your works. It's your works. you are got to watch that mouth. It's your works. And we're going to go to James chapter 2, verse 19, and then we'll read 24 through 26. So verse 19, we're staying right in the same kind of uh, area, so we're good. All right, 19. Thou believest thou that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. So right here, James is saying uh, in 17, he says, even so faith without works is dead is where he starts. And then he's like, if you believe that there is one God, great kudos for you, kudos for you because devils even believe that. So it's not enough just to believe. It's not enough just to believe. You got to stand on his word as well as believe. Amen. Further on 24, 26, it says, ye see then how that the body works a man is justified and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. This is how you show your works. This is your works. It's not enough. It is not enough just to believe God can do it and just to give lip service. As pastor says, give lip service to this word. You got to stand on it. That's your works. Standing on it. Stand. That's what you got to do. Shine your light. That's how you shine your light. Because the Bible tells, tells us also is that your light, if light is in you, light is going to be shown out. Light is light. Romans 2, 13 says, not the hearers of the law are justified before God, but the doers of the law. It's not enough just to hear. You got to do. And your doing is standing. You got to live and walk this word and walk this faith. Amen. You got to walk out your faith. Amen. Because the Bible tells us recompense is going to come to us as well as it comes. He falls on the reins on the just and the unjust. It also tells us in his word is that we got to pick up our cross and die daily. Jesus went through persecution. We are going to too. The Bible tells us in so many different places that troubles are going to come. It tells us that tomorrow has its own worries. You focus on today because tomorrow has enough worries for itself. It's going to take care of itself. We just going through stuff. Yes, 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 yes. You're going through things. You will go through things as a Christian. It is not that everything is going to be easy. It is not. Get that thought. I would love for you to get that thought out your head because it's not going to be easy. Even people who do not believe in God still have stuff, come up with stuff because life 
has worries in itself, the Bible tells us. So they still go through stuff. Even though they serve in Satan and doing stuff, it's not like their way is made easy. They're still going to go through stuff. The difference is, is that we may get piled on more stuff because you believe. Because not only do you have to go against just walking in this iniquity of this earth, not just that, now you have Satan coming at you too and every demon in hell upset with you. Amen? Amen. You got everything challenging this word you're standing on because they're not even challenging you. They're challenging God. And, the, and as you saw with Job, amen. Thank you, Lord. As you saw with Job, he challenging God. I'm going to get him to say out of his mouth, you ain't nothing. Trying to prove something to God using Job to do it. So you got to watch how you stand believing God because guess what? You're carrying his reputation. You're an ambassador of this word. As Paul tells you, you're an ambassador of this word. Amen. Amen. That's why it's important. Why is it important to us? Okay. And we're going to go through that. If you're not standing correctly, you will lose your balance and may continue to fall. You may continue to fall. And it also says that a broken spirit dryeth up bones in Proverbs. And then Proverbs says, heaviness in the heart of a man maketh it stoop. And what does stoop mean? Stoop means you lean forward. You're not leaning. You're not standing upright. And to understand that stoop means where it says heaviness in the heart of a man maketh it stoop. It maketh it to lean forward, right? To understand that is next to understand the next Proverbs in Proverbs chapter 17, 20, where he says, he that hath a forward heart findeth no good. And he that hath a revert, perverse tongue falleth into mischief. So it affects your spirit. It affects your heart. How you stand affects your heart. It affects your heart. So if you're stooping, if you're stooping, as the Bible says, you're, you're, you're going forward, you're finding no good, then guess what? You're going to continue to fall because then your tongue is going to get perverse, as it just said, as we just read. Your tongue is going to get perverse. How it's coming out, and then you're going to continue to spiral off because you're going to start getting further and further to unbelief, which means you're further and further giving Satan glory than you're giving God, right? All right? Then that's what we don't want. Why don't we want it? All right, let me tell you too. Proverbs 17 also says in verse 22, merry heart, a merry heart is like medicine and a broken spirit drieth of bones, right? So a merry heart is like medicine. That's why we want to continue to get in God's word because it's like medicine. It's like medicine. Proverbs 18, 14 says the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. Heart spirit, right? Your heart is going to, what's in your heart? Well, God put there, right? Because he gives us all a spirit, right? He didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Not to say that you won't go through certain things. Yes, you may have those moments. Job had moments. Research it. Job had moments now, but he didn't curse God. He didn't forsake God's name. Amen? Amen. Yes, yes, your spirit is going to... Uh, able it will sustain your infirmity it's going to sustain you this word is going to sustain you um the perfect example is thank you lord um pastor okay when she was going through her stuff we all know um she has shared her testimony plenty of times she has survived uh stage four cancer she survived cancer period not once not twice but three times and the third time recently last year stage four everything clean bill of health thank god but watching her go through i remember her going through that whole process and i'm i used to tell her i'm looking at you i'm watching you why because the bible tells us to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises of god's kingdom so when people say no you ain't supposed to copy no you're not copying that's not what god says he says imitate those who through faith and patience through faith faith not walking by sight faith and patience being patient how you stand you standing on god's word while being patient inherit the promises of God's kingdom. What is the promise? God says by his stripes, you're healed, right? So I'm watching her walk. Yes. That doesn't mean that she would not have perished. That doesn't mean that, but she was ready. She was ready. She was ready because she used to always say, even if he take my body, he can't take my soul. Absent with the body is to be present with the Lord, right? She was picking out coffins, I remember, and everything. We hearing her talk. But she she had that spirit of Job where Job says, though he's 
slay me, yet will I trust him. I will maintain my ways before the Lord. He shall be my salvation. She held on to his unchanging hand. She stayed in his face and stayed in God, stayed in God. Whether he kept her or his will, your, not my will, but your will be done. If this is to end my life, fine. But if she was going out, she was still going out standing on that word. Yet though he slay me, yet though he slay me, I'm going to still trust in God. I'm going to still trust in God. Because when I meet God, he is not going to see somebody who didn't believe him. I'm trusting you till the end. And then once it becomes the end, if Satan take my body, I know it was your will to be done because you wanted me home anyway. You wanted me home like Enoch. You wanted to carry me on up because you needed me home now. I'm ready. Amen. Amen. That's how you standing. Yes, that's how you standing. All things work together for the good of those who love God and called according to his purpose. You got to make sure you standing on these words. You got to make sure that you keeping in your mouth. You keeping life. Because Proverbs says, he that keepeth his mouth, keepeth his life. But he that opened his mouth wide, his lips shall have destruction. You have what you say. Why speak death? We all know we're going to die. But I'm going to go out speaking life. I'm going to go out believing everything God has said and promised to me. Amen. Proverbs 16 says, the heart of the wise teaches his mouth and, a, and a, addeth learning to his lips. You got to teach your mouth. That's what this says right here. He said, how are you sitting here training up? That's what it says right here in James chapter three. Let's go back to our original text. James chapter three, it says right here in verse seven, for every kind of beast of birds and serpents and things in the sea is tamed and have been tamed of mankind, but the tongue can no man tame. It is unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith, bless we God, the father, and then curse men who are made in God's image is basically what it says. And then it says out of the same mouth, you give blessings and cursings. So out of the same mouth, double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Out of the same mouth, you give him blessings and curtains, cursings. Brothers, this should not be so. Then he goes on at 11. Can you bring sweet water? Can a fountain give sweet water and bitter water all at the same time? No, you can't serve two masters. You love one or hate the other. That's what the Bible says, right? That's what the Bible says. Ephesians tells us once we've done all we can to stand, stand some more. Stand on his word. You can't sit here and, and believe God and in the same, at the side of your breath, oh, you having pain. Oh, I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm weak. I can't do this. No, you got to believe God. Yes, that stuff is going to come, but I'm going to call those things that be not as though they were. Because my Bible tells me that faith, the evidence of faith that things hoped for and the substance of things not seen. So I'm calling things that be not as though they were. I can't out of the same mouth call the blessings that God has called on me. I can't out of the same mouth give utterance to the word and stand on God's word. But out of the same breath, I'm turning around and giving glory to Satan because I'm calling everything that I can see in the natural. I'm believing what I see in the natural. It don't work that way. It's either I believe spiritually it's already done or I don't believe that it's already done. Because how I'm standing is going to reflect that what's in my heart is going to come out my mouth. You've seen people where they will sit here and be, woe is me, this coronavirus is really, oh my God, you know, I'm so scared. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And then you turn around and ask them to pray. And they're like, Lord, we know you can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So Lord, I thank you for taking this coronavirus. You got it all in your hand. Well, that's not what you're saying. You're saying that in prayer. You're giving lip service. As Pastor said, you're giving lip service to it. You speak in the word. It's not enough to believe this word if you ain't got no works behind it. If there ain't no faith to back it. Amen? Come on. Amen? You can't speak a blessing and a curse all at the same time. It's not going to work. I can't believe God's report and sit here and tell you everything that I'm feeling in man's report too. That's not, that's not it. Take it to God in prayer. Let him deal with it. Amen. 
Amen. Because Ephesians tells us once you've done all to stand, continue to stand. Amen. Continue to stand. How do we know this? Why? We can go back to our brother Job. Let's go back to our brother Job in Christ, right? Now, we talked about Job and how he fell and he worshiped God. He worshiped God. He fell down. He worshiped God at the at, 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 um, in chapter one after he had took all his kids and everything like that. And then guess what happens? Right here, verse two, uh, chapter two. Again was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them and to present himself before the Lord. And Satan comes to him because he didn't do what he thought he thought he was going to do was curse him after he had took everything. What did we say Job do? He said, naked I came in, naked I go out. I serve God. I, I serve, I, I worship God. He fell down and worshiped God and said, what is this stuff? Right? Naked I came in, naked I go out. Right? Then Satan goes and he hits him with his second shot. Oh, well, you know what? He didn't do it this time, God. And God said, okay. He said, I bet you if I touch his life now, because he had nothing else to take naturally. So all you got is your health, right? I, if I touch his life, I bet you he going to try and curse you now because he going to try and save his life. Every man tempted with his life, right? This is Satan, Satan talking to God. And God says, you know what? You can do what you will, Satan. But guess what? You cannot kill him. You can't kill him. So here comes all these boils on, on him to the point where he looking sick. Why we learn from that? He said, because in Ephesians, when you've done all to stand, he was standing. He was worshiping. But then Satan came with the second and hit him with another shot. That's what we say. When you're going through something, you may start off going through something and then in the thick of it, it gets worse than when you started. Because Satan is coming to challenge everything that you are standing on. Every word that God has said that you are standing on, he has come to try and make a lie out of God to you. Because he wants your soul to perish. That's why the Bible says, think it not robbery when you're going through something. Think it not robbery when you're going through temptation. Knowing that the trying of it is working your, your patience. That patience is working your faith. So that you can present yourself before God. Perfected. Amen. That's what we have to do. Once you've done all to stand. You're standing. You gotta stand some more. When the second shots come, you got to stand some more. Amen. After that first round and he get ready to hit you with the second round, you got to continue to stand. Amen. Amen. And you ask me how, how you, how you going to teach your mouth? How you going to teach your mouth? How you going to teach your mouth? The Bible tells us right there and we'll leave it there. John 14, 26, Holy Spirit teach the Holy Spirit teaches you and brings into remembrance all God said, but guess what? The Holy Spirit teaches you and brings into everything God says. So you got to pray to God before you read this word. But if you don't study, guess what? It, the, the Holy Spirit can't teach you if you're not opening your Bible to study. The Holy Spirit can't teach you. And then if the Holy Spirit can't teach you and you're not studying, you don't understand the words that are coming forth. If you don't study, then there's nothing to remember. And then if you don't remember, there's nothing to remind God about. You can't remind God. So it all starts with how you stand it. That's what I want to leave you with today. How are you standing on this word? How are you standing on God, or God on this word? It's not enough just to believe as we read in this Bible. It's not enough just to believe. You're justified by your works. We see it when I say, I always say at the beginning, she's been an example because it's an example. Pastor set an example to know her faith in God. That was the first thing when she talked about, I'm like, this is not... To me, when you're going through something, it is not for you. It's for those around you. I watched her move with her faith. Imitate those who through faith and patience inherited the promises of God's kingdom. It's not just money. She inherited wealth. And Satan still challenges her and she's still leaning on the Lord. Whether he take her or not, though he slay me, I yet still believe. Amen. Amen. So I want to tell you, there's so much good that comes with believing in God. Amen. And if you don't know God, I'm going to give you these appeals. If you don't know God, we're going to go to Romans chapter 10, verse 9. It reads that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth 
the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Verse 10, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen. So if you want to be saved, amen, I want you to say this prayer after me. Repeat after me and we'll pray this prayer together. And it says, God gave it to me and we'll read it. God, I believe in you with all my heart. I believe you sent Jesus to die on the cross for my sins and raised him to life from the dead on the third day. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me and dwell in me. I give myself and my will to you in exchange for your will for my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed this prayer, welcome into the kingdom of God. I want you to get on the line so I can further affirm your, your faith in God and we can start discussing your next steps of what you need to do as far as being a believer. Amen. Um, I'll give you that number in just a second. The second appeal I want to give to you is that if you don't have a church home, there's no distance in God. We're right here online. You can be accountable to this church home right here. You can be accountable to pastor. Amen. She's a good accountability partner because she ain't going to let you slack not one bit. Amen. We at Ministries of Hope know that to be true. She is not going to let you slip on this word. Amen. She's going to make sure that you are doing what thus saith the Lord. Amen. 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 Want to be accountable to somebody, want to be able to be amongst other believers, brothers and sisters in the Christ and the faith who are carrying this mantle and fighting this good, good, good faith fight. Amen. I want you to get on the line. I want you to either inbox right here on Ministries of Hope. If you're watching us through YouTube, I want you to go ahead and hit that subscribe, like, and share button. And then I want you to also email us as well at uh, M-O-H-C-C, M-O-H-C Church at gmail.com. Amen. If you can't do that, I want you to get online. I want you to get on the phone with me today. Amen. And that phone number is 605-313-5388. So if you just accepted God into your life, I want you to call in right now. As before this even ends, I want you to call in right now. Amen. Um, as well as if you need a church home, call in right now. We'll be able to get on the information from you and be able to pray with you, put you on the prayer list during this time, be able to connect with each other and really commune together once we're able to get together. Amen. And even not, you can be accountable to us right here through the web. You do not have to be going to the church every single time. God is the church. We are the church. Amen. He said, we're the church. Your temple is right here. Amen. Amen. Um, that uh, access code is going to ask for an access code. So that number is 6053 one three five three eight eight and then it'll ask for access code and that access code is three seven nine zero eight eight pound and it'll connect you right to me i'm going to be on the line this morning amen all the way until 11 15 a.m so you'll have time to call in amen and, and we can be able to connect um also a couple of announcements amen if uh this ministry is blessing you and it has blessed you and all those uh, of our ministries of hope christian church family members already who have joined us online as well as in person. Amen. Um, amen. You can go on to ministries of hope, Christian and uh, click on donate and you'll be able to pay your tithes or donate there. If this ministry has blessed you, um, we take PayPal and square. Amen. Cash app will be coming soon, but PayPal and square is there as, uh, right now as well. And then also a uh, Wednesday right here on Facebook and on YouTube, 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time live. Uh, we do Bible study. Sunday school is from 9.30 a.m. until 10.15 a.m. live right here on Facebook and YouTube. And then Tuesday night, join with us in prayer. All the prayer warriors, we're calling you, whether it's your first time praying, whether you never prayed before, to those who are seasoned in this, we ask that you join together because there's nothing like being together. My people humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways, amen pray, then he'll hear from us. So being able to come together and pray, and we don't forsake that because God tells us to pray without ceasing. Amen. And that's on Tuesdays from 7.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. So we want you to come out and do that. And also as YouTube, like, subscribe, because uh, typing in Ministries of Hope Christian Church on YouTube is not going to come up till we get about 100 followers. So like, share, subscribe. If this ministry is blessing you. Share God's word. If the word is blessing you, share it so that others can feel, be comforted. Because the Bible says, 
says we comfort those with the comfort that God gives us. He comforts us so that we're able to comfort others. Amen. So share this word. Amen. May God continue to bless you. That's it for this morning. Hopefully you are blessed by this word. We'll go ahead and pray. Father God, I thank you right now for the word that's went forth. Father God, I thank you that is glorious to your name. Father God, that the Holy Spirit began to teach us things, began to continue to speak to us throughout the week, throughout the days to come. Father God, throughout the hours, Father God, to further understand of how to apply it to our lives. I thank you, Father God, that these words are hitting in their hearts and that, so that they won't sin against them. Satan will not rob them of these words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. May God bless you. Amen. And as always, may you prosper as your soul prospers. Until the next time, be blessed.